Greetings and salutations, Meg. It was just having on here with another episode of Skyrim. So, in our last episode, we, um... Oh, no. Not here. Not now. Okay, I don't see one. But I did hear one. Anyway, so, our, um... Let me just, uh... Alright, so, recap. Found Esburn. He told us to come here, to this location right here. And we're gonna go there right now, too sweet. Hopefully before a dragon falls on our heads. Oh, let's go, Shadowmere. Show them the meaning of speed. Alright, now then. Um, it's unfortunate that... Uh, it's unfortunate that, you know, the location we have to go to is in the goddamn re -y 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 Son of a bitch. Okay. see why I hate fighting dragons. Their AI is garbage. Where did you where did you go off to fight? See over there? Are you fighting Shadowmere? Yeah, uh, yep, he's fighting Shadowmere. I prefer it if you didn't fight my horse. I need. Ah, uh, I mean, look at that. This is the dumbest. Fortunately, it's a blood dragon, so they're weak as all hell. But uh, I mean, look at that. It's like he's so stupid. no idea what the hell to fight. This is why I hate fighting dragons. They're stupid. Look at that. He's just doing whatever the hell he wants. It's like, hello. Where are you? Stay still. Ugh. In my face. Thanks. Look. There. Die. Man, I hate fighting these guys. Anyway. Alright, took care of that now. I wonder where my horse went. Kidding me, was fighting a stupid mud crab. <sighs> oh, boy. Wait a 
start an episode, right? Alright, let's just... Let's fast travel back here, just so... My horse will come back. Anyway... Now then. You bastard. Okay, so... As I was saying... This is one of the most annoying places to be, just because of the fact that, um... Not only are there Forsworn, who are just absolute bastards, I, I really hate them, but what's really annoying is just the fact that this whole place is just a mountainous, it's just a freaking canyon, so it's really hard to, uh, you know, just get around without hopelessly getting lost or ending up in a, you know, location that you just can't really navigate around. Oh. A mine. Alright. And sometimes you just have to go off road. Like, for example, here. Alright. At this point, we're just going on foot. Last thing I need is my. Come on, jump. Alright, almost there. Alright, so the place we want to go is over there. Let's just hope we don't. Well, that's wonderful. All right, boys, you know what to do. No prisoners, no mercy, just get him out of my sight. Damn it! Right. You know that? All right, finish her off. Her. But yeah, the place you want to go to is over there. Oh wow, I thought it was gonna kill him. Oh, isn't that adorable? That is adorable. They're trying to use a daedra on me. <laughs> oh, I love doing that. They think they're they think they're so clever. That's close enough. That's close enough. Okay. Oh, they killed a hag raven. Nice. Well done. All right, who's next? All right, let's get some fresh ones. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed, uh, in my last video, uh, it was kind of echoey. Ah, good, Delphine and Esbern are here. That's how it's done. Oh, that must have been Esbern's. Uh, no, 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 he, he summons... Oh, well, we kind of had to go here and... You? Why are you so tanky? Thank you. Well done. Now then, um, as I was saying, though, I'm pretty. Anyway, I'm pretty sure you guys are aware that uh, my voice was kind of echoey. Um, that was uh, well, and it's probably still echoey. Uh, that's because I'm just test. Uh, I decided to try out um, using my um, my camera instead of uh, my normal headset. I mean, I like using the headset, but. I don't know. Sometimes, you know, I, I end up, I end up hitting the mic and whatnot and stuff like that, and to top it all off, it's just sometimes it's just really uncomfortable wearing that thing. And uh, well, I figured I'd just give this a shot. You know, 
if, if it turns out that the whole echo thing is just too annoying, um, I'll, you know, go back to using the mic. But for the time being, I just want to try out, um, this new... I mean, it's not really a new camera. I've had it for a little while now, but... Ooh. Uh, but yeah. You know, stuff like that. Whoa. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's nothing sacred. Oh man, they just... They killed a giant. That's hilarious. That's too heavy. Uh, yep, alright. I'll live with that. I might drop these bones at some point just because... I have a treasure trove of them back home. I just usually carry them just because they're worth money, but... Oh well. Right then. So. So yeah. Technically speaking, you would have had to go through this Forsworn camp anyway. Um. You know. But. If you can get it. I mean, you know. Yeah, see? You have to go this way. So you had to have gone through there. Granted. Mm, actually, the way I came was probably the more ideal way. Because you didn't. Because the, the way they went, they went right through their teeth. Uh, we kind of, uh, flanked them and took out some of their better people in the, in the back. You know, I mean, my Dramora's destroyed their, uh... The Hold on. What was that? Goodbye. Oh, 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 this is bad. Prior oh. suck it. I'm just using such a weak... Uh, let's use this. And... Oh, I took care of that. <laughs> Long live the dangers. Ooh, that's good money right there. Alright then. Oh, um, I don't know if I've stated this already, but uh, Briar Hearts, if you can just pickpocket their Briar Heart right out of them, they die automatically. Uh, cause that thing is what's literally keeping them alive, and... There we go. I just wanted to get that thing, cause... Eh. It's... I mean, it's probably not the greatest of, uh... Yep, yeah, and there we go. Alright. What do I drop? Um... Eh, you know what? Screw it. I really don't need those. So heavy for no reason. Keep your bones. We've got to get this bridge down. These pillars must have something to do with it. Yes, these are Akaviri symbols. Here, let's see. You had the symbol for king and warrior, and of course, the symbol for dragonborn. That's the one that appears to have a sort of arrow shape pointing downward at the bottom. Okay. Yes, that's it. The symbol on the pillar on the left. There we go. Um, I want to watch out, Esburn. Whatever oh. you did, it worked. Let's see what those old blades left in our way. Eh, probably not much. Yep. There go my Dramores. Don't worry. I can conjure them as many times as I like. But that'll get boring after a while. Uh, you know what? Let's give uh, Flame Atronaut some shot. Wait! Why are you stopping? We should be careful here. See these symbols on the floor? Hmm. Esburn's right. Look like pressure plates. Be careful. We must be getting close. We should proceed cautiously. Well, you know, you can ask him about this stuff. Uh, this is probably the most relevant thing that probably people might ask. It was a cold day. The end of Frostfall is nearly winter in the Jeroll Mountains. We heard the news at Cloud Ruler by courier, riding hard from the Imperial City. 30th of Frostfall, 171. 30 years ago. The Great War started that day. The Thalmor ambassador delivered his ultimatum to the Emperor Titus Mead, the head of every blade's agent within the Old Murray Dominion. I knew that day that it was truly the beginning of the end. 
That's saying a lot considering that the Blades are experts in espionage. So the fact that every single one of them was killed and then their heads brought before the Emperor himself, yeah, that was definitely the sign that shit was hitting the fan and it was hitting hard. It's the prophecy, don't you see? Only a dragonborn can stop Alduin and avert the end of the world. But I don't yet know how you can stop him. The prophecy doesn't say. But Alduin's wall does. I hope. That's kind of contradictory. <laughs> we should be careful. There's no telling what traps and wards the ancient blades may have set. We'd best be careful in here. Do you need something? The faction that rules the Aldmeri Dominion. The ones who almost destroyed the Empire during the Great War 30 years back. There's no worse enemy to humankind in Tamriel. The Empire barely survived the last war. The Thalmor don't intend to lose the next one. It's starting to look like Esbern was right. Be careful. Right, so uh, the trick here is just to, you know, once again, the Dragonborn plate. We'll walk cross on that. once it's safe. You can see. Really easy. I mean, you can just walk across the whole damn thing. All it's gonna do is like shoot poison darts, I think, for the most part. Be careful. Dude, I'm already across. We're so you just pull it. Looks safe now. Safe. Let's move. There we go. Yeah, I think we must be close to the entrance. We are at the entrance. Thing is though, there's one more surprise waiting for us. All that. All right. Here is the door. Now we gotta wait for Esbern. It's he alone knows. Wonderful. Remarkably well preserved, too. It's made out of stone, dude. <laughs> it's, stone has a very, very long shelf life, you know. Alright. Ah, uh, here's the blood seal. Another of the lost Akaviri arts. No doubt triggered by, well, blood. Your blood, Dragonborn. Look Esther's here. Probably right. You see how the ancient blades Try revered me when Sira did? Amazing, eh? To be standing at the very entrance to Skyhaven Temple itself. The Akaviri blood seal can only be opened with the right kind of blood. Your blood, Dragonborn. That's all. Hmm? All right. So... The whole place appears to be a shrine to Raymond. He ended the Akaviri invasion under mysterious circumstances. Look, it's coming to life. You did it. There we go. the entrance. After you, Dragonborn. You should have the honor of being the first to set foot in Skyhaven Temple. That... No telling what we might find inside. Yes? What is it? That's all. Hmm? What is it? Alright, in we go. Sorry, it's just, uh... <laughs> I, I guess that was probably a random thing, because last time I came here, a dragon descended on us and attacked us. <laughs> I thought that I thought that was a scripted event, but looks like it wasn't. All right, looks like we're one hundred percent safe now. And there it is, Alduin's Wall. I think you might all remember this from the promotional material. You know the uh, what do you call it? Like this right here dictates the whole thing. You know when the uh, emp uh, what do you call it? Like this is showing right here, Alduin being cast out. Uh, this right here, uh, showcasing you know the Nords. Fighting the ancient dragons, all that stuff. Uh, but yeah. Uh, we have to wait for Esbern. Or is that. Uh, maybe that's not Alduin's Wall. Alduin's Wall is over here. No, that's Alduin's Wall. Yeah, because that's just. Like, 
But yeah, we have to wait for Esmer to get his butt in here. Here he comes. Let's see what's up ahead. Alright. But yeah. You know, like uh let's see. Yeah. Like this was during the Dragon Wars and all that. Hmm. I mean it looks sort of like the promotional trailer. Aldrin's wall, so well preserved, huh? I've never seen a finer example of early second era Kavir sculpture and relief. Esbern, we need information, not a lecture on art history. Yes, yes, let's see what we have. Yep, that's the three tongues right there. Banishing Alduin. What people don't understand is that he, they used an Elder Look, Scroll. Here is Alduin. This panel goes back to the beginning of time, when Alduin and the Dragon Cult ruled over Skyrim. Here, the humans rebel against their Dragon Overlord, the legendary Dragon War. Alduin's defeat is the centerpiece of the wall. Uh, you see, here is falling from the sky. The Nord Tongs, masters of the voice, are arrayed against him. So does it show how they defeated him? Isn't that why we're here? Ah, patience, my dear. The Akaviri were not a straightforward people. Everything is couched in allegory and mythic symbolism. Yes, yes. This here, coming from the mouths of the Nord heroes, this is the Akaviri symbol for shout. But there's no way to know what shout is meant. You mean they used a shout to defeat Alduin? You're sure? Hmm? Oh, yes. Presumably something rather specific to dragons. Or even Alduin himself. Remember, this is where they recorded all they knew of Alduin and his return. So we're looking for a shout, then? Damn it. Have you ever heard of such a thing? A shout that can knock a dragon out of the sky? You're probably right. I was hoping to avoid having to involve them in this, but it seems we have no choice. And thus, the circle is now complete. We must now return to the Greybeards, and oh boy, they're going to be a little... Well, let's just say they're going to be less than pleased knowing that I've been helping the Blades. You see, the Blades and the Greybeards don't have the best of history. If they had their way, you'd do nothing but sit up on their mountain with them and talk to the sky or whatever it is they do. The Greybeards are so afraid of power that they won't use it. Think about it. Have they tried to stop the Civil War or done anything about Alduin? No. And they're afraid of you, of your power. Trust me. There is no need to be afraid. Think of Tiber Septim. Do you think he'd have founded the Empire if he'd listened to the Greybeards? So, yeah, you know, you can essentially show your hand and feel how you... Uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, this is one of those situations where, you know, basically these two groups at one point one is just going to straight up abandon you if you choose one over the other because you see at one point you're given the option to either kill the graybeard's leader parthenax or to not if you do then the blades will essentially you know be behind you 100 percent, and you can basically access them to go on dragon hunts and all that stuff, which will essentially feed your power and make you stronger. The problem is, though, you won't be able to find shouts. You know, that's where the Greybeards come in. Um, you know, if you decide to stay with the Greybeards, then the Greybeards will help you essentially go to places where there are shouts. And it will make, you know, again, making you more powerful. But, you know, again, it's just that... Have you ever heard of a shout that can knock a dragon out of the sky? Yeah, the dialogue's gonna keep repeating. You're probably right. I was hoping to, if they had the gray beard, think about it. No, trust me, there is no need to be afraid. Think of Tiber Septim. So, Do you think he'd have founded the empire if he'd listened to the gray beards? 
So, you see, uh, you know, again, it's just basically, you know, you have one hand who basically feels like you should be restrained, you shouldn't be using this power recklessly, because as a, because, you know, like the Greatbeards, their order was founded by a man who basically was very humbled after his defeat and realized that using his power the way he was using it was wrong, or at least that's his, his, was his view. But then Tiber Septim came around, got trained by the Greatbeards because he was a dragonborn, and then he went off to conquer the world and basically become the ruler of the empire, you know, basically becoming, you know, essentially, be and then eventually becoming a god himself. It's just, you know, it's a give and take, basically, you know, you can choose to either use your power or you can choose to be restrained. It's like, there, there's nothing wrong with either choice, even though some people will see it that way. Me, personally, I agree with the Greybeards. You know, like, power can be dangerous, but at the same time, I do agree with Delphine because it's like, well, I have all this power, but if I don't use it, What's the point of me having it? It's like, you know, it's a give and take, unfortunately. Um, so I've always sided with the, uh, you know, I've always sided with the Greybeards, and I kind of still intend to, just because I don't want to kill Barthanax. I like him. He's a unique character. He has very interesting philosophies and just, you know, a very unique way of looking at things. You'll understand that soon enough, because we're going to go and see him in a moment, but... You know, again, it is 100% your choice, you can do whatever you want, but it's like, I don't know. I mean, again, it's just one of the illusions of choice. Me, personally, I would lean towards both ways, but that's not how this game works. That's not how Bethesda works. That's not how, basically, choices in game work. You gotta pick one or the other. Basically, staying neutral doesn't progress anything. At least, that's how game developers see it. But anyway, let us continue. Have you ever heard of a shout that can knock a dragon out of the sky? I was afraid you were going to say that. I guess there's nothing for it. We'll have to ask the Greybeards for help. I hope to avoid involving them in this, but we have no other choice. Right. Good thing they've already let you into their little cult. Not likely they'd help Esbern or me if we came calling. We'll look around Skyhaven Temple and see what else the old blades might have left for us. It's a better hideout than I could have hoped for. Talos guard you. Look here, in the third panel. The prophecy which brought the Alkaviri to Tamriel in the first place, in search of the Dragonborn. Here are the Akaviri, the blades. You see their distinctive longswords. Now they kneel, their ancient mission fulfilled, as the last Dragonborn contends with Alduin at the end of time. Are you paying attention, Delphine? You might learn something of our own history. I know the prophecy by heart. Once all blades knew it, when misrule takes its place at the eight corners of the world. Hmm. When the brass tower rocks and time is reshaped, when the thrice blessed fail and the red tower trembles, when the dragonborn ruler loses his throne and the white tower falls. When the snow tower lies sundered, kingless, bleeding, the world eater wakes and the wheel turns upon the last dragonborn. Yep, that's the prophecy that was written in the well, Elder Scrolls. I'm going to look around some more. See what the old blades might So, um, those things about those towers. Uh, the Brass Tower, essentially, uh, you see, there's this, t uh, there are several towers, um, some of them actual physical towers, like the White Tower is the gold White Tower that the Emperor, uh, basically resides in, um, alright, let's see, so we gotta go into the Greybeards, uh, but yeah, um, you know, like the White Gold Tower, that's the White Tower, obviously, uh, the Red Tower, that's actually, um, that's actually, uh, what do you call it, um, that's Red Mountain in Morrowind. Uh, the Brass Tower is the tower in High Rock. Uh, you see, there's this tower called the Adamantite Tower. That's essentially where the gods used to commune. Like, they physically used to go there and actually commune and, you know, you know, essentially, um, govern for a little while, stuff like that. Like, you know, that's where they usually used to meet and talk. Um... You know, like, uh, the, uh, what, it, uh, like, the only reason I even know this stuff is, once again, Mixer X. Uh, he's really good when it comes to lore. Um, and then the, what, and then the snow tower is this. 
It is literally this giant mountain, the throat of the world. That is the White Tower. Ah, here he is. Ooh, you're not gonna be happy. Your training proceeds well, Dragonborn. Where did you learn of that? Who have you been talking to? Hmm. So, you know, you can be honest, you can say, you know, it was recorded on Alduin's wall, or, you know, the blades helped me find about it. So, I like being 100% honest, so I will say this. The blades, of course. They specialize in meddling in matters they barely understand. Their reckless arrogance knows no bounds. They have always sought to turn the Dragonborn from the path of wisdom. Have you learned nothing from us? Would you simply be a tool in the hands of the Blades to be used for their own purposes? What I want is irrelevant. This shout was used once before, was it not? And here we are again. Have you considered that Alduin was not meant to be defeated? Those who overthrew him in ancient times only postponed the day of reckoning. They did not stop it. If the world is meant to end, so be it. Let it end and be reborn. No, not now. Not until you return to the path of wisdom. Yep, that was one of the Greybeards. Dragonborn, wait. Uh, forgive me, I was intemperate. I allowed my emotions to cloud my judgment. Master Einarth reminded me of my duty. The decision whether or not to help you is not mine to make. No, I cannot teach it to you because I do not know it. It is called Dragonrend, but its words of power are unknown to us. We do not regret this loss. Dragonrend holds no place within the way of the voice. Yeah, because you see, uh, Dragonrend, it's, it's a shout. You see, the combination of words, they, it's incomprehensible to a dragon because you're essentially making them mortal. You're making them come to the ground. It's like, you know, they, they can't understand it because, you know, dragons are immortal. They, they, they can't die. Time has no effect on them. But this shout is a combination of mortal, finite, and, you know, stuff like that. Things dragons cannot comprehend. Uh, you know, which is why, basically, Parthenax couldn't teach them this shout. And, frankly, they really don't care to learn it because, well... <laughs> There's no reason to learn to shout when there aren't dragons to fight, and, you know, the Greybeards are not warriors. <laughs> At least not anymore. It was created by those who had lived under the unimaginable cruelty of Alduin's dragon cult. Their whole lives were consumed with hatred for dragons, and they poured all their anger and hatred into this shout. When you learn a shout, you take it into your very being. In a sense, you become the shout. In order to learn and use this shout, you will be taking this evil into yourself. He's not kidding. Uh, when you use the Elder Scroll and actually see into the past, you will see just how, like, the people, you know, like, the people who are basically, you know, fighting Alduin and stuff, like, you know, one of them... I personally don't like because she's just too bloodthirsty. Uh, the other, uh, basically, the other one, her brother, um, he's sort of like you know he just really just wants to defeat all the way because he wants to save Skyrim, but he's not willing to go the extra mile as opposed to the oldest member of their group who's willing to use the Elder Scroll to try and get rid of Alduin that way. Um, you know, it's just it, it's it's interesting given their dynamic, the fact that all three of them kind of have different ways of looking at things but yet at the same time together they can't you know they, they were able to create this shout and stuff you know it's like it, it, i i find it very interesting from a character perspective you know like you have three individuals from three different backgrounds so to speak all of them united by the fact that they hate the dragons they want them gone they want them all to die Wind. well 
Not all of them, because right. oddly enough, it was Parthenax who taught them how to do all this. Uh, I cannot yeah. teach you the shout, because I do not Sorry. know it. It is called Dragonrend, but its words of power are... Sorry, I, I can't skip to this dialogue, unfortunately. I'm not trying, regret this loss. Dragonrend holds no place within the way of the voice. But not Dragonrend. The knowledge of that shout was lost in the time before history began. Perhaps only its creators ever knew it. But I am not the one to speak of it to you. Only Parthenax, the master of our order, can answer that question. If he so chooses. He is our leader. He surpasses us all in his mastery of the way of the voice. He lives in seclusion on the very peak of the mountain. He speaks to us only rarely and never to outsiders. Being allowed to see him is a great privilege. Only those whose voice is strong can find the path. We will teach you a shout to open the way to Parthenax. Yep, the most unique shout in the entire game, in my opinion, next to Dragonrend. Um, it's called Clear Sky. Uh, you know, you learn all three words of power right off the bat, so you don't have to worry about, you know, getting, you know, getting a dragon soul or any of that nonsense. Um... It's a very, it's a very unique shout because you see, as the name implies, it literally clears the skies. You can actually use it, you, you know, and it's not just, you know, limited to basically using it to open your way to Parthenax. You can actually use it to literally clear the skies. Like if it's raining or something, you use that shout and boom, it's not raining anymore. <laughs> if it's snowing, boom, it's gone. It's, it's really cool. It's an awesome shout. Taking their positions. Just gotta wait for the slowest one of all. <laughs> Come on. Hurry! Hurry! The path to Parthenax lies through this gate. I will show you how to open the way. Look. Ah. Core. And there it is. Clear sky. It takes a few seconds. Oh, for goodness sake. Come on. Do I have the shout? Oh, come on, man. Please give it to me already. I will grant you my understanding of clear skies. This is your final gift from us, Dragon. Use it well. Again, how do you train yourself to do this? 
Clear skies will blow away the mist, but only for a time. The path to Parthenax is perilous, not to be embarked upon lightly. Keep moving, stay focused on your goal, and you will reach the summit. Use clear sky. All right. Nice to open the way to Parthenax. All right. Uh, I'm really not going to need much. There. All right. Here we go. Now, if you. Yeah. That's why you would never make it. It literally does damage to you. It is snow. It is ice, so it will destroy your stamina. You would never make it, no matter how high you uh. Look, Bakur. There we go. Now you run, 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 run like you're the gingerbread man. I'm sur I'm surprised though that this uh. Ugh. Look, Bakur. There we go. Whoa, whoa. Eh, I was gonna show it to you in third. Oh. Yep. Uh, no, I don't want that. I need clear sky. Yeah, this shout, uh, has really, it has one of the lowest cooldowns ever because, well, you know, you have to deal with all this. Look, but cool. Oh. Huh. Yep, ice wolves. Uh, sorry. I mean, uh, control. Uh. Ow. Okay. I was actually going to go easy on you. Look! Bakul! Huh. More ore. Ah, oh, never mind. That's just a goat. I thought that was more ore. Anyway. And just a little bit more. Alright, where's my... There we go. Come along, my dears. Yep. Another one. sky that is gorgeous that is a beautiful beautiful depiction of an aurora borealis if i do say so myself and here we are not still a little bit further Throat of the world. Ah, now uh, that over there—that's where uh, what do you call? It? That's where Parthenax is going to descend. He uh, comes up from down there and lands over there. And uh, that ward wall—it also does have a. Uh, it does have a. <clears throat> sorry, it does have a uh, you know word of power. Obviously, it is. Well, in my case, it'll be the second uh, word for fire breath. 
I wish I had the third one, just for the sake of coolness and stuff. Uh, but, you know, is what it is. Oh, and, uh, you see how, you see that little pillar of wind that's kind of going upward? That's where you have to read the Elder Scroll. <laughs> little, uh, foreshadowing there. But anyway, we're just going to call it off right here for now, and uh, we'll pick up in the next episode. So until that time, though, this is MegaWizard79, beating you all adieu.